up. So I just did a one minute, I'm gonna go deeper here on a five minute of why you shouldn't do business with friends or family. So the thing is this, I'm all for friends or family, right? And these are people you love, people you care about, people that care about you, except that business is about profit and business is about making money. And so if you're in a for-profit business, you could end up having fights about money, right? And what I always tell people is, if you're making lots of money, then the odds are you're not gonna have that many disputes. Although I can think of scenarios where you could still end up fighting. But what will happen is if you lose money, if you lose money, now all of a sudden, everybody's gonna be at, be at each other's throats. And here's the main crux of the issue. You won't have anything in writing. So if I go into business with a partner who is an arm's length person, that's not my friend. I mean, we should always be friendly, but they're not my family. They're not a cousin or a sibling or a parent. And we do business together. I'm going to want to have a contract and I'm going to want the contract to basically, I always say, you need to define your roles, your responsibilities, how you count your money when things are good and how you deal with problems when things are bad. And those are all the things that we should put into, let's say it's an LLC, the operating agreement between the owners. Or if it's just a more informal joint venture, I still want to have a written joint venture agreement. Or if it's a corporation, I want to have a shareholders agreement. So in this law firm, I have partners and my partners and I have a contract. And the contract talks about exactly what I just said, how you d divvy up the roles and responsibilities, how you count your money when times are good and how you deal with problems when times are bad. And I can say, knock on wood, that we've never had to look at any of the dispute resolution clauses because up till now and we're going on seven years we've never had a fight that ever made me think i needed to go back and look at the contract but that's kind of the moral of the story is when you're in that fight that's when you want to go talk to a lawyer and the lawyer's gonna first question is do you have a contract and the answer should hopefully be yeah of course here i have it right here do you want to take a look at it and the lawyer if they're smart they're going to start in the back because in the back is where we put all the dispute resolution language such as what state um, what county, what jurisdiction, what law, and important things like, do we have to arbitrate? Do we have to mediate? Um, is Does the prevailing party, are they entitled to attorney's fees? And these can drastically change the analysis of how you proceed and what your options are. Now, I cannot tell you how many times where I've got the family business, maybe even it was dad started the business and now he passed it on to the children and so the children are now generation number two. And what often happens is, one of the children will be essential to the business and literally running the day to day. And the other one of the children will just be mooching off the business and just taking money, maybe using it as a busy piggy bank or worse, maybe getting in the way. And so you're going to end up having strife between these kids. Well, if it's a very informal family business, and a lot of times these people come from the old country where they don't even do contracts like the way we do in America. And so maybe dad never even thought about it and he didn't think, Hey, I need to have a contract with my kids. And so now the kids are gonna be in a fight and they're gonna to go to talk to a lawyer like me. I'm like, what do I do? How do I get my brother who's good for nothing out of the company? And I'm gonna say, do you have a contract? And they're gonna say, well, no, we don't have anything. And that seriously limits our options. One of the biggest limitations is it's gonna be very hard to get attorney's fees. So if your brother is stealing from the business, um, and actually, let me tell you a quick anecdote. So I talked to this lady and she says, I've got a big problem with my sister. I'm like, okay, um, well, what's going on? She goes, well, my sister is stealing from the business. And even worse, I think I found out that she set up a competing LLC and she's been diverting clients to that other LLC. So I'm losing clients and she's disparaging me and talking, talking bad about me to the other clients, and, which by the way, are all reasons why we could sue our business partner, right? And so I ask, well, do you have a contract? Well, no, no, we don't have anything in writing. I'm like, okay, well, is she a partner in your business? Well, I called her a partner, but actually there's nothing in writing. So there's nothing in writing that says she has an equity interest in my business. I just called her my partner. I'm like, okay, well, was she an employee? Well, she was an employee and I also called her my employee, but we don't have anything in writing. I'm like, okay, well, how did you pay her? Well, I paid her as a 1099. So 1099 is independent contractor and employee is W2. So I'm like, okay, so your partner, employee, contractor, sister with nothing in writing is stealing from your business and go back to the beginning when they started and you're doing business with your family member, you never think to yourself, well, I need to have a contract. I need to have something in writing. But the point is, is when you find out you're fighting about money and you're losing money and you're fighting with this partner of yours, now it's, yeah, they're your sister, but they're also your partner and they're hurting your business. 
So please, 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 the moral of the story is always have a contract. And if you can't sit down with your sibling and say, hey, we should have an agreement between us, then you probably shouldn't be doing business with each other. And uh, another way of looking at it is when everything goes sideways, I'll say I told you so, and then you'll say, you know what, Eric, you were right. So if you guys have questions or comments or similar stories or anecdotes to share, please leave a comment below.